Hello and welcome back to season two, somehow, of the Ospreys Irie podcast. Uh, your home for everything Ospreys, uh, interviews, bad punditry, <laughs> and most of all, good player. Um, I would say, have you had a nice summer off, boys? But I think neither of you really had a summer off. There was uh, the- about four days. I think I had a little bit longer than Robbie. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Good, a good summer otherwise, gentlemen? You know, there's continued to be rugby on. Uh, yeah, those four days were lovely, you know? I kind of sat in a heap. Um, maybe went for yeah. a walk at some point. I can't really remember now. I've kind of, it feels like it's just been continuous. Since about 2018 when I started doing this for a living. The only person who's had less of a break than you was Adam Beard. <laughs> yeah, and all South African rugby players, seemingly. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. Brilliant. Okay, so um, yeah, I've had a decent summer. Um, as people on Rap have guessed, I've got a new employer who I'm not going to name, but it's pretty obvious um, because I couldn't be bothered to change from work. Um, <laughs> well, DH- DHL Stormers have taken you on. By the DHL <laughs> yes, I, I, I now live in Cape Town. Um, I've moved my entire family there. Or you're a delivery boy. B. We we're you know you you decided you heard about my days briefly working for UPS and decided to start a rivalry. <laughs> yeah, in the niche working for uh, <laughs> working for delivery companies, three letter and, delivery companies. Yeah, uh, and works within rugby as well. <laughs> no, um. I won't name them, but you, you, if you're on the video, you can guess. Um, mm. But yeah, so it's been it's been a change. It's been busy. Um, it's been a lot of standing near Chandler Cullen himself, mm. who's a very tall man. Um, Where could it I, be? Where yeah. could it be? But equally, I also, you know, get paid by the same person as Alex Callender. So who's really been? <laughs> Uh, and Kaylee Powell. So, yeah, you can guess. But uh, good off season. Um, quite a, if we talk about it from an Ospreys point of view, quite a weird off season because we did all mm. of our announcing really early. And then the staff selfishly decided to go on holiday. So there was bits where we were just sort of like twiddling our thumbs. And I was messaging mm. Robin, like, tell Bethan to get off the Sun Lounger. And, and give us some I news. wasn't in fairness. I was. I was. I was telling Bethan to get on the sun lounger because I've seen, you know, yeah, <laughs> I've seen how is. hard you push yourself. Yeah. But I was telling you to watch "Marry Me," which I think I mentioned on the podcast, the yeah. the J Lo movie, which she still hasn't watched, as far as I'm aware. And she did message me after I mentioned it to check. And no, no, look, this will come up every week on the podcast. Now has has Bethan. From the Ospreys behind the scenes, watched "Marry Me" yet? It probably won't, but I could do that if I chose to. I mean, we also got like some great stuff over the summer, and then we obviously dropped our Toby Booth interview, mm. which was amazing. We had such amazing feedback. Um, you know, really great opportunity for us. Um, that wouldn't have come about without the support of everyone, the the likes, the the retweets on that hellhole of an app um, that, you know, I, I have forced myself to pursue with um, because there's just no one on Blue Sky apart from me yesterday and a man called Peter, who we have just the <laughs> one conversation with constantly. You do have the odd members of Irish Rugby Twitter on there, though. Yeah, but, you know, they're everywhere. <laughs> True. So... In terms of that uh, Toby Booth interview, there will be more coming through the season. We, um, I won't go into details, but we were very fortunate enough to uh, foster a, a communication with the club who have been very kind to us in um, allowing us to interview staff. Uh, we won't go into more detail, but read some good stuff in the pipeline. That, that, that we're uh, really excited for, especially as the in, in this milestone season. Rather than doing a dedicated news section, we just thought in this super mega extra bonus special preseason welcome preview, 
we'd sort of just talk about the news in little sections. Are we are we in agreement there, lads? Yeah. So let's start on the sign in front. Uh, let's start with some staff. Richard Lancaster has been announced as our new chief. I think his chief commercial director would be the right thing to say. But he's definitely like head of marketing. He's got Anthony Cole Johnson's old job, essentially. Hmm. Um, so Richard is commercial Swansea, director is the position. Commercial there. director. Listen to that. He's a Swansea boy. Um, he. Former coach at Swansea Rugby, yeah, um, which, which is surprisingly isn't mentioned in the press release. Yeah, um, but he's a Saint Helens boy through and through. Most recently working for Swansea University, um, mm. he's a big part in the commercial aspects and advertising of the Varsity Day, which, as someone who has been to said Varsity Day, is a huge, huge affair. It's the second mm. biggest Varsity in the UK behind the Tory one. Um, and it's also the other televised on, you know, fully available national television. Hey, hey, don't knock uh, Phantom TV, Derby Uni's <laughs> TV station, which oh, I hosted man. our coverage of Varsity two years in a row when I was a uh, student. Look, I, I would never knock Phantom TV. <laughs> I was but... the head of Phantom TV for a year and we did nothing. <laughs> it's just a title for your LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What use it's been. I think this is the first time I've mentioned it since. But, yeah, so it comes with good stock. You know, it, it, it buys into the, um, I said this at the time on, on the Hellhole app, that it mm. is a reflection of what Toby's built with the squad. Yeah. And that has seeped into the staffing um, and the move to the stadium. St. Yeah. Helen, so it's a, it's a really really good appointment. Um, yeah, and heard nothing but good things. And I think it ties the Ospreys further to Swansea Uni to the community, which I think uh-huh. is something that's been talked about a lot by Toby Booth, by Lance Bradley, by pretty much everyone within there. You know, wanting it to be a stronger tie to the area, to the region. So yeah, continue to do that. Continue to move in that direction. As someone that's very familiar with that, and you know the student population as well. If you can bring some of that in. Uh, would be a wonderful thing. So yeah, you know, I I can't claim to be an expert, but all all signs point upwards, and you've got to trust. You know, the recruitment across the board at the Ospreys has generally been very good over the last few years. So, got to hope this is another moment of it continuing. And you know, to have someone named after a World War Two bomber plane, this is cool. Like if he got into if he got into charity boxing, his nickname would be sorted straight away. Yeah. Richard the Lancaster bomber. Like that tell is me that's the not only that. that is the only Lancaster yeah. there is, yeah. yeah. What what other Lancaster would there be? There's gotta be like a Stuart, Stuart Lancaster, yeah. <laughs> Richard the Northern Man, Stuart yeah. Lancaster. <laughs> uh, Dan, his son. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Who is weird who has weirdly He's... been signed to Rasset Night. Yeah, too. I wonder what that I wonder how that happened. I wonder what Scout was picking up on that. It's like a certain um, Manchester man's son holding a very high position at yes. a, a, a northern club. I won't say more. Yeston's favourite person. I mean, I haven't got Imagine. any grudges against anyone. I'm not really sure what that comment's all about. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm on about, Yeston. I mean, look, I could phone him. I could phone you his dad. phone him. He's got you previous could. of doing that to me. Yeah, I'm not I still sure got his how, number saved. Yeah, I'm not sure how I've been picked on this uh, situation. Because <laughs> you, men- <laughs> you mentioned it on the pod before. You know you did. <laughs> um, so uh, continuing with the signing front, we have hmm. signed from the Osprey Sub Academy Ryan Combia on a short term <laughs> deal. Yeah, um, I think something widely talked about and kind yes. of speculated. The moment he was released by the Scarlets, I think a lot of people yeah. thought we were short a winger and wondered this was coming. Um, it is, you say, a short-term deal with Keelan Giles injured through for two or three months. Um, I would suspect he might stick around beyond that. I think he is a player who we're probably getting much lower than you know the asking price would have been a few months ago. And 
he is a, a top quality URC level winger and has had, you know, moments in which you wonder whether he'd make away a squad. And those are the players we need to be making sure we can we can bring in. And I think it's a really, really good signing. I'm very, very pleased to have him and Cassande, who's been confirmed since we were last on when we were kind of talking about it as a something we've been hearing about. Um, yeah, I think they're both two very good signings and something different from the Luke Morgan, Keelan Giles, Harry Houston, who are good players, but are perhaps not the tallest, you know, and perhaps in similar moulds in that they're very elusive, fast options. And having someone, you know, Combeer is rapid, but yeah, who has he's, he's, perhaps... He's got that power in him. Yeah, has a bit of bit of power, uh, as does Cassande. Um, a bit high if we are looking to kind of a kicking game. Um, something we saw Connor Moyes actually work really well with. Yes, I was going to come on to him. Uh, when we get on to the, the game from the weekend, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think a really useful option. And as I imagine, considering he was talking, there was a Wales Online interview where he said he was, if he couldn't pick up a, a deal in the next few months, he was going to be working as a, you know, as a bricklayer. I think probably a solid bit of business and yeah, a really useful squad option. Yes, then. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's just, just a good sign in really. You know, it's really unfortunate from Compier's point of view that he got let go at the end of last season because, you know, he's always been that consistent performer. And, um, yeah, it's, it seems that, you know, it's good for him that he's managed to get a new club. And, you know, I think it, it could work really well for him. You're, you're the Ospreys, obviously, you've got your Giles, your Morgans um, and, and players like that. But Your Giles, your Morgans. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and you know, we obviously the younger players coming through like like Houston as well. But um but yeah, you know, you kind of always felt like there was a winger or maybe too short when um when North Cuth- Cuthbert and Prothero all le- all left. So um it's nice to see additions coming in, and especially two of them with, with Cassandra as well. Yeah, I think with me and Combia, I think like Robbie said, when he got released, everyone was like, Ooh, Osprey's hello. Like sign him, and there was a bit of that with Alice Summerhill as well. But that was mainly Cardiff fans feeling sorry for him. Um, and I like Combier a lot. I remember that Mad Ospreys game uh, a couple of years ago. Where he scored that hat trick mm. where he made Prothero look like a competition winner. <laughs> um, it was yeah, it was genuinely like, well, how has this guy been let go? Yeah, and that's not me saying that the back division at the Scarlets is bad. There's some good wingers down there, Tommy Lewis, Tom Rogers. But you're thinking like he's only twenty five. Yeah. Which is mental. But but then also is apparently like now the second um most capped under twenties player. Wow. Because the the most capped under twenties player is Morgan Moss. Yeah. But if um, you offered me any of those back three players at the Scarlets last season, I would take him. He'd be the one I'd want. Most. Yeah, I'd say Tommy Lewis as well. Yeah, I like Tommy Lewis, but Combo is more Tommy proven Lewis. at this level. Yeah. Um, and but, yeah, I like Tom Rogers, but I think Combo yeah. fits what we'd want to do more. Fits the mold of winger we want. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's five. Like he's listed five foot five foot ten, forty in stone. Yeah. Which is short, but he's got a low centre gravity and good power, good mm. hips. He he well, runs. When like, I said he's taller, I meant he's taller than me. Yeah, he runs like Ashley Beck. Sure. He's got really good hips. I remember Paul Williams tweeted about this a few years ago about like mm. players who run with good hips and Ashley Beck is like the, the prototype for that for yeah, me. He's yeah. like, just glides and you know, he scored twenty six strides in like sixty appearances for Scarlets, which is a you know, an unbelievable strike rate. Mm. Um and he scored two on the weekend. Like, you know, what <laughs> what's what you know. And one of them um, was a ve- very good try that chip and both chase. Of, both of them superb, I thought. Yeah. Um, his first try where he spots exactly where the space is, you know, mm-hmm. he gets, after a long sequence of offloads and passes for kind of people that haven't seen it, like there's a lot of, yeah, of interplay. And he stands big, 20 meters away. Bumping yeah. and throwing offloads. He stands 20 meters away where there are no defenders and waits yeah. perfectly, times his run onto the ball, uh, stands in a position where if Luke Davis can get it to him, he is always scoring. And it's yes. a really good bit of like assessing where the space is and knowing his position. And yeah. I thought like really good bit of, of technical wing play there. And then, yeah, his second try, again, he's given a bit of a sniff and he turns what 
what a lot of wingers would take as like a solid five or six meter carry, he turns it into a try. You know, he takes up the other 20 meters as well. So, yeah, I yeah. think two really, really good tries and some good touches, good moments on defense as well. I thought he was generally very good in his time. Yeah, he, he's very good at that. Um, almost Sean Edwards mm. shoot out of the line, shut the attack down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think I, I look, I'm really excited for the lad, 25 not even hit the prime of his career. If he could stay injury-free, gives depth at that position for us. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm happy. Uh, speaking of wingers who... Speaking of wingers and Scarlets, but this one likes to fight them, um, <laughs> we have signed Daniel Cassende on a two-year deal. Another mm. man who's in fine try-scoring form at the minute. Um, so we signed uh, we've signed Cassandra a permanent deal. I'm assuming two years as a standard for contracts nowadays. Um, yeah, big fan of this six foot three, good pace, good defense, very good over the ball. Um, and will chase kicks all day long, and yeah, will fight you because he just can because he loves the badge, like. I, I cannot explain to you how happy that Scarlet's game made me <laughs> and, and just watching him grip Ben Williams and say like, like he was from the top end of Bonner mine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm currently listening to Alwyn Jones's audio book, right. Mm. Um, which is very good. I've had it for ages. I just haven't listened to it. Um, and he obviously has a lot, he has a lot, a lot of love for the, for the Ospreys, but he just talks about like when, um, James Horwell stamped on him in the 2013 Lions tour. And he mm. just basically says, I could have batted him, but I didn't. <laughs> because where would that get me? Which I feel like is what Daniel Cassette is like. But just just when he faces a scarlet, it's like, I could have just laid you out, but I decided not to. And of course, that video clip resurfaced where he literally he utters the words, they didn't want it. Which I believe is where that came from from us, wasn't it? Possibly. Possibly. I think it's just a phrase. It's just a thing people say, you know, it clicks on. And look, I will happily credit Daniel Cassando with anything. I think he made a hell of an impression in his two games, um, both local derbies. But yeah, made a hell of an impression there. And I'm very happy to be seeing more of him. You know, I think he's one of those players that would have been in when we look back. You know, we talked about like way back this time last year, kind of streets won't forget Osprey's teams. And yeah. he was an instant instant rotation into there and yeah excited yeah. to see him get more time he i mean he also made it into your south africa new zealand video yes yes <laughs> a representative of the the drc <laughs> the congo yeah you know he congo's could've, could've... proudest rugby player alongside yeah. mados tamboy but yeah and yeah. i guess Krishunza, but and um vincent shisuka and, and vincent shisuka yeah, yeah. Shisuka's, yeah They've got a decent team that they could put together if only they had a national team. Well, I, I put this in the group chat because obviously Instagram works out the fact that you collaborate on posts, so it mm. comes up on both their feeds. It was just really weird clicking on Osprey's post and Mados Tamboy and Vince Satuka commenting on it. Yeah. Um, they love it. They, so I, yes, I love that there's a really supportive community of Congo rugby players. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like West Wales, but in like, Central <laughs> yeah. Africa. I'm they sure they love that. They all know each other and just support <laughs> each other. Yes, then, Cassende, how, how, how are you feeling about that? Uh, yeah, good. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on you know, over the course of a season, not just for a short period of time. Um, I remember when he came on for his debut, it could have been, there could have been a, a little bit of a better scenario than coming on at Rodney Parade when you're behind and you're down to 14 men. Mm. But he, he he did make up for it the following week. Um so I mean, yeah, that's my my main concern in the way. Says how he gets on, you know, for the course of the season. You know, does he does he stay injury free? That would be a bonus. And if he can replicate that performance that he gave against the Scarlet, you know, most weeks, then it will be a really good bit of business. Yeah. Um, Post most delivers, you know, coming up. Yeah. Uh... Uh, something that we reported on, well, I reported on the Twitter a while ago, was the signing of Connor Moyes. Mm. Um, 
So for context, I was sent this rumor back in May that we had signed a player from Nottingham University. Um, and I spoke to my friend, our friend and yours, Dave Rogers, the commentator, um, who commentates in Buck Super Rugby, very involved in that league. And we both came to the conclusion that it must be Connor Moyes. Mm. Um, and it was. Um, it has been reported by his junior club, which is the same junior club as Hugh Sutton, um, mm. that he signed a two-year deal. But this is unconfirmed by my sources and obviously not by the Ospreys themselves. Um, I do have notes on Connor Moyes. They just happen to be in a different place right now. Um, it's a bit like my, my it's like my girlfriend who goes to a different school and you wouldn't know her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he had a ridiculous strike rate at Nottingham Uni. Like I'm talking like 24 tries in 56 games or something like that. Score! He, I can tell you, I can tell you, seven tries against New Ash Green. Um, yeah, played for in one game. I think just in one game. Yeah, was uh, top try score. You know, like really strong. Really strong kind of work. Uh, I can't is, actually tell you his try uh, is total thrice. <laughs> no, I, 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 I can. Could. I can because there's an eight minute montage um, on YouTube, which is very yeah. good of his clips. So he's he's twenty one, twenty two, six foot three, about ninety five kilograms, coming out of a very much a semi professional environment at Nottingham Uni mm. or Uni of Nottingham. Um, wing outside centre, really good defensive game. So, yeah, he has 53 caps for the Nottingham first team with 28 tries, which is a ridiculous strike rate. Mm. Um, he showed up well in the Origin Series, chased his kicks really well, positionally yeah. was very good. I think um, the thing that on. caught my eye about that highlights package is so much of it is just kick checks. And yes. that is, for a winger nowadays, at professional level, 50% of your game is mm -hmm. how good you are on the kick checks. And that was the thing that stood out on Saturday about those those games in the Origin series is he's really good on the kick chase. And that is an absolute diamond in the rough. If you can sign someone who is that good on the kick chase, even if the rest of the game, you know, even if it did need a bit of work and by, you know, by the looks of the highlights and by the looks of the weekend, that is not an issue. Um, yeah, you've got you've got an absolute diamond in the rough there. And how easily can you step to the URC rival? I don't know. Obviously, there is a step up from Bucks, but I'm very eager to see where he goes because I I think that's really, really promising, everything I've seen from him. And I'm not yeah. just biased because it is, you know, Nottingham Osprey's connections are rare. <laughs> yeah. I think... He's definitely you... walked past my wall with the bloody... this The Owen Williams shirt on it behind me. <laughs> for people on the video. This is very nerdy. I'm a Bucks super rugby nerd, right? Mm. Having watched the league a lot when I was in university um, still watch it to this day is that where it was when Nagy and Sutton were playing in it mm. is a very different league to what it is now mm. Nagy and Sutton was, were very much students playing in a semi-pro type league whereas now these boys are coming out are athletes mm. right they're in they're getting proper testing. Their nutrition is sort, you know, it is more catered for, you know, they're, they're on proper weights training and things like that. And that's not to say Nagy and Sutton weren't, but you look at, if you remember the narrative around Alex Dombrandt, we came out of university in what, 2019? Yeah, yeah. They were essentially in, not so many, they just said he's fat. That's, that's all they were saying about Alex Dombrandt was he's fat. He's an unbelievable rugby player and he is an unbelievable rugby player. But he had puppy fat and mm. his conditioning wasn't great. But it just so happened that he could make line breaks and throw offloads and he won the premiership two years later. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when Nagy made his debut, he made his debut in the Rainbow Cup. Yeah, Pro Away, to, dra away, away to, to Dragons, where he takes a ball of Alan and Jones, yeah. hands someone off and scores a try. But you look at Nagy there, he looks a specimen. You know, when Sutton made his debut, I think then he made his home debut and scored a try against Connacht. You know, the, the pathway works. The pathway is so rich and vain. Reese Davis played in Bucks. Hmm. You know, I assume got banned for fighting. But, <laughs> fight, 
biting someone's ear off or something. Um, you know, Yeston Hopkins played in Bucks, mm-hmm. Cowan to a plot at Scarlet. You know, this league is a legit contender league that boys now can step into into pro rugby. Like if um this is a shameless promo for the other pod, but um Dragon's Lair did a great interview with Hugo Staffson, mm. who is obviously Swansea RFC coach, but Swansea University um head coach as well, alongside now former Osprey Joe Thomas and Joe Grabham as well. Mm. Is down there. Um but he talks very much about like why that connection is so important, you know. Without it, we wouldn't have and we'll come on to our series in a bit, but um Theo Curry mm. playing for us on the weekend, who is a former Harlequins Academy and Scotland under 20 lock. But it just so happens to be that because he's able to go to Swansea University, which is a high performance program where he plays in Bucks, that we're able to use that. Yeah. So it's a weapon we have that well, I mean Cardiff do as well. Um but is not that common in the URC? No, it, it, it's because it's obviously because we're the British, say so to say, us and the Scottish teams yeah. are the Brit, the British part of the the Irk. We, have, but our, our two teams are the only two that are in the Bucks League. Yeah. Um. So, like Cardiff have signed Joe Cowell at Cardiff Met. I mean, it's obviously very well documented about. Um, Emmanuel Faye were both so not going to Cardiff University, heading, instead heading down to Exeter's program. You know, Chris Chunza went down to Exeter. You know, this is well documented, but this, you look in the um, the SRC, right? Aberavon, Ed Dunford was a Cardiff University fly half. Uh, Eddie Anya, who's a Kenyan Sevens player, but also played for Cardiff and Buck Super Rugby. You know, all these different lads you know, yeah. are coming out, going into pro, semi-pro environment. So there's no reason... Connor Moyes, you know, 28 tries at 53 appearances at six foot three, 95 kg without coming into a professional SNC environment can't be for me, you know, not saying test level, but a, you know, a solid Luke Morgan esque like club winger, you know, mm. a dependable thing. And then hopefully he'll be like Maggie and Sutton, who it's probably taken like two years longer, but people are now talking about Nagy as being in the Wales squad. People were raving about Hugh Sutton at the end of the year. Yeah. Right? And we talked and we talked briefly about this in our interview with Toby about that connection. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. Any more on uh, signings? No, I mean, the, well, the other thing, I suppose, is just Toby mentioning he, we were too short in the squad that he wanted. And it, he said we might not get those over the line. I'm guessing it's looking like that's not happening. Combia might have been one of those, but there was already talk of him turning up in training from Wales Online by then. So... Yeah, the, the other one rumoured is Lucas Sitaro, because currently we're on three senior scrum halves, but we had hmm. Scott, Whitlock, Scott Whitlock made his debut on Saturday. Right. He was an uh, academy lad from Aberavon, um, played a bit in Harper Uni as well. Um, so whether Sotaro does come in, who's a Scarlet's Academy scrum half? Yeah, who is former Scarlet's Academy? Good, good. Well, you know, highly rated down there. Mm. And it'd be interesting, but that's signings. Uh, yeah. It's. I just. I suppose. I feel like we're probably done before the start of the season. I wonder if we yeah. want to come in during the season. Is the I, note? I will talk about this in the D extra preview, but there mm. is a rumor that one of our tight end props has an injury. Okay. Um, I would still like us to sign a, a prop, yeah, or look to bring in a, maybe a cheetah's prop or a hurricane's one in for most of the year, um, just to have that depth. Let's talk about kits mm. because they happened. Um, so I said I talked about this on rap actually on on Monday. Macron have had a really strong year. Unless you're yeah. from Cardiff. <laughs> because I feel like they stiffed Cardiff massively because Cardiff always want this like traditional heritage that type mm. kit. Whereas we went like, let's take as many drugs as we can <laughs> and put it on a kit. Um so obviously the, the home kit made its debut in the origins. I thought it looks really nice. 
I, I really like it on the players more than in the promote. The initial promotional photos, I don't think, did it any favors. No, I think once you saw it in the better light, there was a different photo of Jack. I, Morgan I yeah, I said that looked much better. Jack Morgan yeah. and Jack Walsh, and it I looked it so much better, much better there. And then once you see it on the players, I think it looks really nice. Yeah, it looked a bit like a training shirt in those initial photos, and I was a bit unimpressed. And I thought it was perfectly nice, but I think actually seeing it in motion, I really like it. Yeah, it's really understated. Like the pink yeah. isn't like in your face. It's really yeah. understated. It looks good. Yes, Dean, what are your thoughts on on that home kit? Yeah, it seems perfectly fine. I think it's um, you know, like you just said, you know, the pink doesn't really strike out and you know shock anyone by any means. It just it's just like a nice little design added on to the. You know, traditional black home shirt. Of course, there's been a little bit of debate about that with the whole neat situation, but um, <laughs> but but yeah, it's, it's, it does seem quite quite a nice kit in fairness. Yeah, I think no, the big I, talking point with it is the lack of a sponsor. Ah, uh, um, yes, we'll come on to that. Which, yeah, well, so to this is completely, you know, off the record. Myself, like. My own digging, not based on any sources, not based on having any conversation with the Ospreys, unlinked, but like Eco Watt, who the uh, sponsor last year, are currently being sued by the F1. Yeah, um, by, by Alpine. And yeah, <laughs> you suspect that might have something to do with it, completely baseless yeah. um, speculation. And there was talk at the sport Q&A. Um, Lance Bradley said they had they have a deal that's very close to being over the line, very close to being announced, yeah. that will come in once the season begins as the, the shirt sponsor. But supporters' kits have to be drawn up. And we also said a friendly before that. So, Matt you know, Macron had a release there. date window that they wanted yeah. to get everything out on. Um, obviously, at the Alpine and Eco Watt stuff, um, there is... This has come from the supporters Q and A. Is that yes, the deal is ninety percent done. It's over the mm. line. The players' kits will have a shirt sponsor, but they've made the decision because of the feedback to sell supporters' kits, like replica kits, without mm. a sponsor all season. Mm. So when you go to your club shop, or you go to Macron, or you go online, your shirt will not have a sponsor. Yeah, um, which. A lot of people have been crying out for for years. Mm. I like, kind of wish there was an option. If you had the option, if you wanted the sponsor yeah. or not. But yeah, I mean, it depends what the sponsor is. If a sponsor says That's like, true. you know, Ron Evans pies, you know. But then I feel like if I look back on old Osprey shirts mm. and like I'm a big football fan, I look back on like old, my old my team West Ham. Mm. Where we were sponsored by like Dagnum Steel or Dr. Martins and then the Ospreys, like you remember like the N Power Kits. Yeah, exactly. Like I kind of grouped like them by the it, primary it's, sponsor. It, it's synonymous. Yeah. You kind like, of think of them almost in that era. Yeah, like like when all of Welsh rugby was uh, sponsored by BT. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and things like that. So yeah, you do I'm not saying like I remember the the West Acre days of 2021, but like you know, but like yeah, I do, see you... Travis Perkins and I think of Northampton Saints. Yeah, exactly. You know? Or you, yeah, obviously you've got Dyson, you've got uh, yeah, uh, you've got like you know Habu at Bristol because it just makes <laughs> yes. me laugh that Habu is a sponsor. I've got yeah. endless investment banks with other English clubs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what any of them do. Or like when I look at Leicester Tigers, they get angry. Um, but that's for other reasons. So, yeah, so <laughs> you hate and then, Holland and Barrett. You yeah. hate Holland and Barrett so much. You're they smashing my, up their stores, seeing their health bite. food drinks, hating always, it. There's diverse yeah. range of crisps. You can't face it. They're different every flavors time, of pom bears. It's always run out of kids. It's the only place you get other flavors of pom bears. Every time I go past, I just get ultra processed food and wave it in their <laughs> face. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, I suppose the, the, yeah. the point there being, um, I think there's some people concerned with the let's talk about money in Welsh rugby that we wouldn't have a sponsor and that's going to be an issue. So, but yeah. that is that is you know coming in, and supposedly there is nothing to say that we're going to be short. Yeah. Um, Lance Bradley said the club ran at around a two million, um, 
loss last season, but they're hoping by 2025, 26, that'll be, they'll be turning a profit uh, or they'll be breaking even rather. The, the, um, so the, the 2 million um, pounds which, loss is a controlled loss. I would like to yeah. say that. That's, so and the, the thing is all sports clubs make a loss pretty yes. much. So you look at the premiership and it's only Exeter that are in the green. Um, so aren't running at a loss. I, I'm not going to obviously release details, but mm. the, the the club I happen to be employed by, mm. we had a recently an, an annual like review of last season and preview. And when you see figures, right, sometimes the numbers look daunting. You see a two million, it it doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things because yeah. it's not what you're losing; it's what you're on track to be in two years time. Mm. So if you look at Quinn's finances from three years ago, hmm. it's a lot worse. That It, it yeah. looks worse. When yeah. you look at where they are now, you're like, oh, right, there's an upward trajectory. And that's what Lance Bradley essentially was brought in to do. Yeah. Because that's and what he did at Gloucester. St. Helens is going to make a huge difference on that front, as we yes. talked about when it was announced. Yeah. So, so for, for context, um, TV money... Hmm. Accounts for sixty percent of our income. Yeah. So, if you're in England and you see the Premier Sports deal, you but you panic a bit. But actually, it sort of helps because you're getting, you know, we you're contributing to a bigger TV deal. That the the aim is it's going to be bigger than it was before. The reason T T mm. aren't up in is because essentially they've exceeded the value of what they can get with rugby. Because essentially rugby can't peak anymore. So if you take it to a new platform, Premier Sports want to to, to level it and to, to it plateaus. So yeah, the the away kit looks like an Evian ball, but yeah. I love it. I really do love it. And what's actually great is the marketing, and we do this really well, right? As a club, is the marketing for the away kit had um, one of the under eighteen girls front and center mm. with um Kai Bishop, who's one of the Austria's wheelchair players, who's a great character in and around the club, um, whose mum is really active on one of the Facebook groups. Oh. Um and says that the the third, James the third Fender kit, situation. Yeah, the third kit is 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 good. Okay. So yeah, I, I you know look I'm really happy with Macron this year. The training stash is lovely. Um, th- I really like that stuff, and it looks good as well. Um, yeah, I think you know. I thought we had a really good stuff with Umbro, right? And we mm. all remember how good Canterbury was. I do feel like we're getting, so, you know, we had a bit of teasing pain maybe with with Macron, and I think all teams have. But I really think we're hitting our stride mm. with them now. So yeah, Are we, any more about the kits? No. I mean, just I think it's great to see more of the the wheelchair team being included. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, I think it's a really cool part of the, the club's identity. There are very few clubs in Britain and Ireland that have, or even professional rugby in general, that have a wheelchair rugby team attached. And it's always great Successful to see them involved. One as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the, well, I mean, the top club in Wales and one of the top in the UK. So actually, should we talk about that supporters meeting? It's not on our list, but we might mm. as well because it comes a lot. So. There was a supporters meeting. None of us were able to to get there, um, but someone on on Glad, the hellhole that is that website that I am addicted to. We've just the thing is we've just got to rank the hellholes, and it's less of a hellhole than Twitter. Yeah, I suppose. So, I mean, is it though? Also, it depends. You bump into really, isn't it? Yeah, it depends which <laughs> so, it depends which one you go on. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's funny because every time the Ospreys one on the the sub like subreddit, if you want to call mm. it, started in 2016, and every time I open it, it's like, "When is Kieran Farnatier rocking up? Please don't be a <laughs> shit as Jamie Nutbrand." <laughs> <laughs> They're the first two comments on it, and it makes me laugh. Every like yearning for a simple time. Um, so basically, the stuff that came out of it is obviously what we talked about already. Mm. Um, the they put an explanation of the income that we get from the WIU for essentially the rental of our players hmm. is is always used on the squad. 
um, he reiterated that, that, that cutting a, a region was never an option. Um, and actually knowing what we know now, what came out of the news yesterday about increased funding mm. makes sense. Um, because obviously they would have been present at that JSG meeting. Um, so yeah, the, you know, everything that we've heard so, heard so far, um, is, yeah, positive talks, uh, mm. obviously going to get a new funding package that'll bring us up to six, 6.4 million. Obviously, nowhere near the the Irish teams, but is is about in is is in line with the Premiership salary cap. So the Premiership salary cap, if people don't know, is six point four million, hmm. um, and uh, teams obviously choose to spend either to the limit or or not. Um, and for the uh, I suppose the Van Wart Connor run, um, Ulster and Munster yeah. are slightly above that. Ulster are going to be slightly lower next year, or to have been higher than that. Ulster are probably going to be around that figure this year. Yeah. Um, Leinster are about sixteen times that, though. Geordie yeah. Barrett is rocking up just for the love of. Um, yeah. looking at green things because he, he yeah he played for Gary Owen yeah um, his his yeah. aunt once mentioned Ireland in passing and yeah. thought well oh, I've got to one day play there he's actually not being paid he 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 borrowed Hugh Sutton's father Ted box set yeah. throwing yeah. back to an early podcast <laughs> um, there was also mention of um, Gatlin not agreeing with the Osprey's approach to rugby and culture Mm. Um, which is something that we've talked about a lot. Before. Yeah, and I think it's maybe a topic for another time, but it's an interesting yeah. one to have an inside Osprey's line on. So important stuff about um, St. Helens. It's well underway, but don't expect to see any structural change at the stadium until 2025. Mm. Um, basically, they're looking at major companies or sponsorship for building and naming rights, basically to be like the you know, the DHL St. Helens or something like that, you know, like the, you are in the pocket of the DHL. <laughs> I am. I, it's just because I can see on the screen, um, <laughs> the, the N power DHL. Um, there, there's rumors of a, an energy company wanting to use solar energy with car charging points. So someone like EDF maybe, um, but yeah, that that's, that's by the by. Um, there is confirmation, obviously, we knew this already, but a 4G pitch will be installed mm. um, and it will continue to host uh, Swansea University RFC for Buck Super Rugby. Um, what this will also allow to do is upgrade the TV facilities as well. So it's mm. be easier to stream down there, which is one of the issues at St. Helens at the minute. It's a nightmare to stream a game down there. Okay. Um, also, obviously, host Swansea University and will also be able to host um, community teams and a natural pitch while St. Helens is one of the best natural pitches in that league, yes, and probably a test to it sort of being down there quite a bit, it won't hold up for sustained yeah. use. Um, and Toby both actually explained that there is a lot less soft tissue injury and mm. far less turned ankles and twisted knees on a 4G pitch, um, which is uh, something our friend who's, who, um, who Griffin and was also talked about as well. Hmm. Uh, the existing clubhouse will be primarily used for corporate, um, obviously, you know, naturally, because of where it is above the, the, the ground. Uh, there'll be a fan zone in a covered marquee. Um, they are looking at sourcing food locally um, with street food vendors, blah, blah, blah. The new stand will be higher than the existing standard seat, around five to 5,000 and... Uh, hoping that a covered terrace will get planning for around two, two and a half thousand, give it eight thousand capacity in total, with room to expand by another two thousand if we can sell out on a regular basis. Um, as for the type of stand, Edinburgh's Hive Stadium is is your like visual metaphor, mm. uh, which Lance which Lance was apparently involved in construction of. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. That was something we weird. hadn't heard about before. I yeah. like to think it's not an administrative role. Like he was like a sparky or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, Toby was a former sparky, so he could yeah. have done it. We could have, yeah, just get Lance in. You know, he probably put up, put up shelves in the, yeah. in the clubhouse. Um, And as Robbie said, the, the, the plan is to break even by 26, 27. Um, the revenues, you know, will improve yeah. being at St. Helens because we all make money. And like, um, like as you say, the the number of match days will go up drastically, and yeah. they will be able to make returns on that. Right at the minute, it's only ticket sales. The Osprey's yeah. making 
returns on. So suddenly every game that Swansea Uni play, every game that Swansea RFC play, you know, junior teams, etc., can all play there. Uh, local clubs, you know, when they get to finals and so on days. And the Osprey will now take cuts off food and drink, which has not been the case at the Swansea.com. And, and, and ticketing, you know, and, and yeah. all this is so great. Uh, then Toby Booth talked um, then, so I'll route through this as quick as I can. He explained that they now consider themselves a top eight team and intend mm. to stay there every season and be a top five team next year. Um, basically, did a very good presentation. She gave the players uh, where preseason started, where we are in terms of top eight teams in various areas. So scrum defense, line out, try score, defense attack. So basically, where is the team they needed to improve? And where is the team they, you know, in some areas, they're at the top. Right? Mm. Um, each player has a pathway program, which identifies what they're good at and what they need to work on. And it's reviewed ongoing throughout the season. Um, the academy is working well for us. Um, it's it's probably not getting applauded. It's of like a, a Cardiff for a mm. Dragons or Scarlets actually at the minute who are producing like superstars in the sense that they're getting national attention, but we're cheering out regular players. Yeah. Um, we still have a small squad that is overworked due to budgets. We're still carrying injuries from last year. So you think of Reese Davis, Adam Beard. Some players will be out until about round three or four. Stuff we knew already. Culture, right? And we're going to come on to something that contributes to the culture in, in, in a minute. Um, on and off the field, players are bought into it. Sign-ins show this. They're not just bringing in tidy players, but players who are going to buy into the culture. They would love to bring in superstar players, but they're not. Um, they're not prepared to bring in prima donnas, essentially. Um, and it's an interesting point with the budget going up by potentially as much as two million, potentially going yeah. up by fifty percent next season, um, season after the season coming, and that opens up a few things like that as well as just having more depth. You know, having maybe ten more players in the squad. Yeah, as, but as also being gonna... able to keep hold of the likes of you know. We mentioned before in this podcast, but like Jack Morgan, Morgan Morris, Dewey Lake, all that contract this season coming yeah. up, Kieran Williams, yeah. yeah. Being able to keep hold of all of those would be fantastic. And then bring in some players on top as well as maybe a, a star name. Yeah. So essentially, that was the sports QA. Mm. Um, Yestin, how do you feel? Do you, would, you know, having heard that, do you feel optimistic as an Ospreys fan going forward? A little bit. Um... I think despite the budget cuts for all four sides really this season, there's like a hint of optimism around for everyone yeah. in a way. Um, you know, with youngsters coming in, you know, everyone's spoken about the ones at Cardiff, you know. We've we've seen, you know, so a lot of players were signed on to the Dragons as well. And obviously the, the younger players that are coming through the Ospreys. So yeah, I think so. Um it's interesting about Booth's comments about being a top eight side and trying to progress onto a top five side. Um, I've got a piece on that in the works, which will be quite interesting. Um, and it's just going to be really interesting to see what will go on because as Welsh rugby always is, even <laughs> as a fan or as someone that wants to have a career in writing on it, it's it's going to be some roller coaster and. You know, it's it's a, it's it's the time now to strap ourselves in and see what happens in in a way. So um, it's going to be uh quite exciting, I think, uh, season twenty four, twenty five. Speaking of roller coasters, Ospreys released something uh this week. Um, mm. so they dropped a teaser. A theme park. Uh, uh, yeah, they they yeah. <laughs> Ospreys land. Yeah, the Ospreys have now merged, merged with awkward. Mm, that, that <laughs> like, yeah, megaphobia, but the phobia is winning <laughs> trophies in the late 2010s. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the, the phobia is Steve Tandy and an attacking game plan. Um, that's harsh. I'm just, I'm just thinking of, of all the rides we could have at Osprey's Land, you know, the Achillean Giles log flume. Um, um, I'm not I'm Kieran, sure, surely there's a it's 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 a Kieran Williams ride, but you're a crash test dummy in a car crash. Kieran Williams <laughs> dodgems. Yeah. Where well, you just, just Kieran Williams things. everyone's got Kieran Williams' face, all the dodgems, right. and you just bash into but, each yeah, other. Yeah, rather than dodgems, it's like murder ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
you just give everyone a ball and you just crash into each other at high pace. This is a great idea. Um, it's not our worst one, to be fair. No, We've I think that I think that's a legitimately superb idea. They should implement at St Helens when it opens. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I lost my train of thought. We released the documentary. Mm. Um, so about for... the creation of the Kieran Williams Dodgers. <laughs> Yeah, this is the start of it right now. It's really meta. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, doc- so sorry, released... the, yeah the documentary yeah, on the YouTube. Documentary. Oh, I'm so tired. We released the documentary. <laughs> um, so for context, is I was very lucky enough. We all, all three were very lucky enough. But I don't think you all watched it early. Mm. You, Robbie, you definitely didn't. No. Um, we were lucky enough to see it early, a couple of hours before it dropped and um i was gobsmacked mm. at what we'd made as a club mm. for those who aren't aware this was all made in-house it was not contracted subcontracted to a company like they didn't bring someone in to follow it around this was made by uh, lloyd uh, church house who is a very talented videographer who i believe is around, traveling around the world now. I'm not mm. sure he's still at the Ospreys. Um, a man called Daniel, I think. Oh, again, very experienced videographer. And Harrison, uh, who is head of content and PR at the Ospreys. Uh, obviously with input from everyone. Um, so it was made by three people and all edited by them. But if you haven't watched it, oh my God, I was mm-hmm. not expecting that. Like the trailer alone, when I first watched that trailer, I got goosebumps. I don't know about you guys, but like ha- as someone who's watched a lot of documentaries and watched a lot of sport documentaries, actually, they they can fall into like two categories when you see a trailer for them as well. That they are really self righteous and like, yeah, we're really good at stuff, and you know our culture is amazing, and you know we're you know we, we're infallible or they just come across as like disaster flicks that mm. people like to watch and when you when you see it and there's the bit where morgan morris is walking along the gloucester pitch and he just like pushes the camera out the way mm. because they've you know and and me and you were there robbie right yeah, yeah. you saw how dejected everyone yeah. was the last thing you want is someone pushing a camera in your face that's real emotion Mm. and you, you don't see it until you get to a point because it's all pretty standard stuff actually you've got like pieces to camera you know Robbie you you, you know a lot about film um, yes and you're mm. sort of involved in a lot of interviewing of people um, and I've got sort of limited experience in that as well but when you interview someone you know you're you're looking for sound bites essentially you're looking for things that you can put in bylines in in you know bold and in paragraphs right mm. And you get all that standard stuff. And then you get to the Munster game, right? And the stuff around the Munster game. And they go into the changing rooms beforehand. And Justin Tipperick's given a team talk. And there's been a narrative painted of Justin Tipperick over the years that he's this like socially awkward weirdo. Mm. Like who only talks to Tyler B. Like that, yeah. the, 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 But that's what it is. Like he's this quiet, unassuming man. And he's basically calling everyone cunts and saying like <laughs> you should play, you should play for the badge, uh, but but you're just not expecting that off like a club that prides itself on being really family friendly, you know. And then they come in at halftime. We all know what it was like at halftime in that Munster game. We all watched yeah, it. Yeah. You know, Owen Williams has thrown two interceptions. We oh, basically threw one of them. In fairness, uh, Keith threw one of them. But all our bad luck had basically yeah uh, to one half just a horrible first 20 minutes yeah. of everything uh, falling apart and you get and they get into that and you know i've been in them changing rooms before we get mm. in and you just get bollocks and they go in and they're like yeah we're down cool let's go out and like we're still in this mm. and, and you see it and you see another side of toby of this like because he comes across as like that quick-witted uncle you know who gives it's really good advice. Something, and then he, sorry, something we saw a lot last season 
was the Ospreys yeah. starting quite poorly, but hanging on in there and then coming out the second half a different team. Yeah. And getting to see that process and see what was happening at halftime, because we do see bits in there of Toby talking, but also Mark Jones and Duncan Jones. Yeah, the and Duncan stuff is my favourite. Duncan's great. I think of yeah. that. Talking about, you know, looking your opposite man in the eye and just running through them, be it scrum, carry, whatever. And you saw that, though, because we had the mm. Munster scrum, like, yeah. on toast, right? And we arguably should have had a yellow card, mm. you know, if I'm being pedantic. But you can see that with Duncan, like, he genuinely believes in the programme, yeah. which is of his scrummaging programme, which is why I'm not worried for, like, the likes of Gary Phillips and Ben Warren, like, who have had yeah. questions of their scrummaging, because I can see it in Duncan and how he talks there. Yeah. I thought really interesting bit in, in the week as well, separate to this, but um, there was a really good interview on Wales Online with Dimitri Arhip from Ross Bros. Favourite. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. By Ben James on Wales Online. Mm-hmm. And good interview. He, yeah. Really, and really good interview, like really well worth reading. But he talks about his first scrum at training, the Ospreys, when he was yes. against Duncan Jones. He went, well, I'm, I'm twice this guy's size. I'm going to just smoke him. I'm going to smash him backwards. And he just got eaten alive because Duncan technically was so much better. Mm-hmm. And he said he then spent so long when he was a player and when Duncan was a player doing sessions with Duncan after mm-hmm. training and so on and just learning things and learning to be technically good. And Dimitri Arhip went from being a very rough around the edges person of no, you know, physically was big enough to be and um, you know physically dynamic enough to be a good scrummager but had no yeah. technique whatsoever to being one of the best scrummagers in uh the pro 12 as it was at the time and you know signing a enormous contract with Montpellier as a result yeah. and yeah just like shows how good he is you know on top of everything else like really yeah. interesting way of looking at Duncan as a scrum coach because I think we all here rate him unbelievably highly I think he's amongst the best in the world best scrum coaches in the world uh, and he deserves to be mentioned and he isn't but he should be mentioned alongside the Adam I, Joneses I, and the Jason Rock yeah, yeah. I mean the Tom Harrison stuff like you you've met Tom yeah. and, and yeah, yeah who's brilliant Tom, and yeah who's absolutely fantastic but as I always mention I mentioned to my English mates is that mm. we dismantled Tom Harrison scrum like yeah. twice yeah. in a row like literally there's a, there's a bit in I wish they interviewed him later in that Leicester game mm. because they interviewed him right at the start of the Leicester away game. There's no scrubs. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's a fine game. So I'd love to see his face at the final whistle. Because <laughs> I, no, I, I think Tom Harris is a really interesting guy and that video is great yeah. as, as a prop myself. But it's just like, what did Duncan see in that? You know, yeah. like... I, I did actually, I don't think I mentioned this on here, but I did mention after we finished recording that I was an Ospreys fan. And he had a moment of going, oh, right. And then was silent for a moment. Six in <laughs> Vietnam flashbacks, that's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he wakes up, sees Reese Henry in a cold sweat. <laughs> Just the face flashing, getting closer and closer. <laughs> that should yeah. be a ride at the Ospreys theme park. <laughs> Just Reese Henry Reece... getting closer and closer. A Reese Henry haunted house. The ghost train. Yeah. Um, but then the flip side of that is mm. the, the, the low of the Munster game was into mm. that, lion, that Lions yeah. week. And I really liked the human stuff around that team meeting. I, I really hope there's a lot more team meeting stuff because mm. Mark Jones just mugs off one of the players <laughs> and goes, who's the king of the jungle? I know. What's the Lion King of? And someone said jungle. And he's like, um, lions don't live in the fucking jungle. <laughs> it reminds me of that. Um, my, one of my favourite jokes is you know the that Australian puppet, the purple one. I can't remember what his name is. But it's like a puppet comedian essentially, right? And he and he goes, um, "Can you name me a blue fruit? Like a fruit that is blue?" And someone in the audience shouts, um, "Blueberries!" And he just like screams, "Blueberries are fucking purple." And I don't, I don't know why, cause just, cause it's just the obvious thing to say. If you say, like, something is the king of, like an animal, you just immediately go, the jungle. And then you don't yeah, really think yeah. that li- lions don't live in jungles. <laughs> so, But but that's the human side you don't get to see of mm. the ospreys. And yeah. then just, the, but then you flip that then to Owen Williams, right? Who mm. comes out of this so, so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just his technical nags of just like this man spent all his time analyzing other teams, mm. 
and his just comprehensive notes of like, this is how we're going to beat the Lions. Listen up. Yeah. And you, and you get to that bit, the changing room then, and they're all talking like of their different roles. You've got like, um, you know, this is what I'm saying. Owen oh, Watkins saying, this is what we're going to do in defense, right? You're not mm. going to give him any space. Jack Walsh speaks really well as a fullback saying, you know, we're the ones, we've got, we've got to bring that accuracy, we've got to bring that tempo because we know the forwards are going to do a job on them. And, and then you get the really human stuff of like Sam Parry and that video for the 150th. Yeah. And I'm just sat there like, this is my club. I've just produced this. Yeah. My favourite moment of that is the halftime on that game. Yes, I want you to talk about this yeah, because you put us some really good on Twitter. There's a fantastic moment at halftime and um, it's something we never really see. It's something I think the Her Story series, the WU have been doing with um, Whisper Cymru on the Welsh women's team have had a few moments like this as well. Um, but you rarely get to see this happen. But there's a moment in that Lions game where we see Adam Beard walking to the change room, talking to Rhys Davis, Beardy and the cunt together. And he turns <laughs> to to Davis and he starts saying, well, well, they're moving this free part in the lineup back. And if we can just bring this forward and we can change this. And Davis is like, right, OK. you know." And like Beard points like an analyst is holding a laptop and like he looks at the laptop. And then we cut back a moment later and Beard now is sat down with the laptop and he's got, Davis and Hugh Sutton crowded around and he's going like, you know, look here, this is what's happening. And that thing he notices is exactly what's going on. And you've got Davis going, oh God, no, you're right. Okay, yeah. So if we change this and we do that and just a moment of them spawning it live and changing, you know, tactics and also pointing out how, you know, endless, endless braids you can give to Adam Beard as a line-out caller but, and as a line-out technician. But yeah, just a moment of it happening live and in like, being really aware of what's going on and how many times must that happen in a season? You know, how many times is he doing that? How often is he spotting that? And those are coming through and we never get to see them. And it's just great to be able to see those kind of really technical moments coming through and seeing those small adjustments being made. Yeah. And I, you just sort of like, it's really weird knowing what happens next is the high and the low, mm. like the highs of Bregen to the lows of Gloucester. Yeah. You know, yesterday, what did you think of it? Like, what did you think of the the, the concept, the execution? You know, the, you know, yeah. Is it, it? Go on. Yeah, it's just it just looks like a really well packaged thing. Looking at really different areas, like you saw in the trailer, when then Nicky Smith leading the team talk ahead. Oh, uh, don't in Cape oh. Town, and that's <sighs> like the high of it. And then you've got the low of. You know, that you mentioned the Morris clip in Gloucester. I think it says a clip of Gareth Thomas coming off in yeah, the Bulls game. Yeah. And you've got right at the end of it, right at the end of it, Reese Davis with his head in hands after the Edinburgh week and before the Munster game. Oh, yeah. yeah, where he does and his knee in. When, when Davis loses the line out right at the end and Edinburgh keep yeah. hold, on, hold on to the ball for the last minute and boot out a play and win by four points. And you know, you just see the the raw motions there. You know, it's it's clearly not made up. You know, they're not acting up to the cameras at all. And this, yeah. you know, it's it's really as good to see. And it's going to be really interesting to go on that roller coaster, like I mentioned earlier, from the European, you know, knockout matches to the game yeah. in town, and then back down to the Bulls Leinster game, then kind of back up in a way to and and that knockout round to qualify for the top eight. What's I think re- it's something you mention as being almost surprised and proud that the, the inner club staff made this, but I think yeah. it could probably have only been made by people around the environment constantly. Yes. Because those players aren't reacting and aren't acting up to it as though there's an external camera team in there, you know? Mm. It's people that are used to being in the environment and maybe they're often holding cameras to bit, get little bits of social media and that's just stepped up, you know, to kind of a, the next logical layer. And I think you can kind of tell everyone is comfortable with the people around there and the people in that environment. And that comes through. There's two things I want to say. The other bit is mm. I really like um, Toby paying tribute to Simon Church at the start, mm. a man who never gets talked about, I think as a, as a, you know, head S C yeah. guy, a key part of that staffing group as well as Chris Towers as well. Um, and the 
that I can't think of anything else in rugby that's been made like this. Hmm. Like every club has made like a preseason diaries or like behind the scenes on a match day. But I can't remember a club releasing a documentary that shows their warts and all. Mm. Uh, and right, this is not me slagging off Cardiff. No. So Cardiff are releasing that doc preseason like series in it, but the different blocks that they're doing. Mm. And there's some really, really good stuff in like the Mackenzie Martin stuff in, in Ely, you know. But you know, what what it's essentially doing is showing how good that club is, right? Sure. In and, and rightly so, because they should celebrate the, the fact that they've got an amazing, you know, really good young players. They've got um, a black player who comes from a really underrepresented part of Cardiff. You know, it's trailblazing essentially, right? They should celebrate that. Mm. But my my issue with it is, it, it's very much like look at us, look at how amazing we are. Where you know that bit in The Simpsons where the newsreader like clips at the back of his head. To, to like make his you know all this look really good and then because he's had so much plastic surgery he's like melted the back that's essentially what it is it's not addressing the fact or barely addressing the fact that mm. Cardiff were a poor team last year who didn't compete in the forwards and lost you know so many games right yeah whereas I... this directly addresses the fact that we fucked it up against Munster. We're taking back-to-back 60-point losses at uh, Leinster and the Bulls. Mm. We, cra- we crashed. We we you know, and we did. We crashed out of Europe, mm. right? Because we didn't play as well as we could. I don't know another team or international team who would release something like that. I do think a lot of the Her Story stuff is really worth watching on a similar note. Yeah, like, the, the, and the I don't quite get stuff, into it. This season, when Wales did crash a bit, yeah. you know, I think it was easier for them to put that together when Wales were broadly good but had the odd off game. They were really yeah. good. And then this year, I think it shied away a little bit. And that Ireland game, we saw very little. But, um, but the her story yeah. stuff comes from, again, an underrepresented part of the yeah. game. And yeah. it's all, but, it, but my thing with the her story stuff is manufactured by mm. an external thing. It's yeah, through yeah. Vodafone. And yeah. as great as it is, it's a corporate, what sure, corporate, yeah. what a corporation wants you to oh, there's, see. There's a about great women's moment rugby. in every episode where someone phones someone up using a phone with a Vodacom sponsor yeah, on it, exactly. and all, they always say the phrase, "Oh, it's great to stay connected." TM. There's, yeah. there's, you know, drink whenever they say "stay connected" in her story. But the, so I mean, but like, I will, this is I, will so I will post raw. it every time because it's my comfort yeah, TV no, show. The, is her, her story. story stuff is great. But, but the, yeah, the, the, this is just so raw. Yeah, no, it's and, it's great, uh, and and know. I selfishly wish it wasn't an. Ep- I'm assuming it's an episode a week, but I I wish we were getting them more regular. I wish we just got a drop of like a 90 minute version because I could have yeah. watched. I could have just gone straight through that. I would have loved that. But I, I came out of it like I love this club and I love this mm. culture mm. because. You know, the, so the person who you know we're, we're very close with, the Osprey, said to me, "This wouldn't have been made if the team weren't so close and trusted the staff so much." And that's not yeah, saying yeah. Um, they just trust Toby and his team. I mean, like everyone from ticketing to operations to security. Do you know what I mean like if they yeah. didn't trust these guys, then this wouldn't be made? So right, I think we've spent enough time on that. We need to crack through. Right, mm. very quickly, Origin series was very mm. good. Young players got some great um, uh, game time. You know, players who necessarily will feature in the URC, but will be in the SRC. Um, very quickly, who came out of it for you, Yestin, with some credit? Um, maybe not in terms of credit, but I think Scott Whitlock might be one to watch in the SRC next season yep. um harry houston played well i think this hmm. might be a you know we, we spoke about combi earlier but i think this could be a real chance for him to to gain consistent game time in in the urk or the urc whatever you want to call it um and uh yeah it's really exciting to see how, how he gets on i, I suppose and um 
yeah, it's, it's, it seems to be a lot of young players coming through and I think might have read somewhere from that supporters meeting they want to get a, a set number of players through, you know, a couple of yes. players into yeah, the squad six each players, season. Yeah. Six players a season. And yeah. um, I think Houston will be one of those. Yeah. Robbie, who stood out for you? Yeah, I'd say likewise. I think Harry Houston was a real standout. He's very, very good. Um, I thought Connor Moyes, as well as I mentioned earlier, like mm. having a winger who looks that strong on a kick chase is invaluable when you get into the higher levels of rugby. Um, so that really stood up. Um, and then, you know, a bunch of the the established players, the kind of Ruben Morgan Williams and Keith and so on, I thought were were very good and looked back up to speed. Um, Whis- whisper it slowly. And... Keith and yeah. Phil Cock and a singer together. <laughs> Yeah, that could be fun next year. Um, some of the forwards, it's sometimes like you know, because I kind of skimmed through these games, watching them back, or I wasn't watching live. I didn't, really, you know, there was another game on at the time. Um, That's less nice. important game, but you know, um, and yeah, watching it, watching it back, you know, perhaps couldn't pick up on the forwards so much. But Harry Deves, exceptional. His front and follow up to make the tackle, brilliant, excellent. Yeah. Um, but the other big name I think to talk about is like Dan Edwards who I thought looked oh, a cut God. above this level. And to say this kind of, you know, Super Rugby Cymru was kind of the level he was at the start of last season. And yeah. he now looks comfortably above that level. Like the amount he's come on in a year is extraordinary. And I'm so excited because I think this should be the season where he kicks on and takes that 10 jersey for himself. And I think he probably goes in with that being a very even freeway contest between him and Williams and Jack Walsh. And mm. you can't really call who is currently the first choice 10. I would put not quite my house, but maybe like the chair I'm sitting in now on, which is, you know, it's a reasonably nice armchair um, on him being the Marks and Spencers on him being the starting 10 by the end of the season, him being the first choice 10 by the end of the season coming. There's just, I I will talk about my players, but he came on and he's literally first touch of the ball. Mm. He puts that cross kick into Luke Morgan and Luke Morgan yeah. scores. Well, he adjusts last second. Like, he isn't looking to do that. Yeah. He's about to pass the ball. He notices the cross kicks on and readjusts and drops it on the toe. You cannot teach that. No. <laughs> like, that's no. ridiculously good. His vision and ability to change and like, skill set is extraordinary. And you look at how much he improved first year to second year in the 20s and then first year of the Ospreys to the end of the second. Like, he gets so much exponentially better every season, every year he plays the game. The, I just think, where could he be in five years? And he kicks him two conversions from, like, essentially the River Tawi. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I think young player-wise, Harry Houston, I really mm. enjoyed. Um, Dan Germain, uh, mm. so who's a young, is a lock by trade, played lock at 18s, but was playing seven, which I think is really interesting. Um, six foot six, something like that, out of Lucker. Same club as Ben John. Um, Theo Curry is one I've been mm. keeping an eye on. I thought he came on did really well. Scotland under 20s, lock. Yeah, former Queen's Academy, current Bucks player for Swansea. Um, Scott Woodlock, like I uh, yesterday said, I think he's one to watch. I think he's a, a, a few years off, um, mm. but he's definitely got the raw materials. Um, comes from good stock. Uh I have to I have to mention it, Garen Phillips just murdering someone. Like yeah. I have seen people go to prison for less than <laughs> what he did to that poor fullback. Um I thought Luke Scully came up with it really well actually. Yeah. No, um, agreed. Both at ten and a, thirteen. Yeah, test level thirteen. Yeah. As we all know he is. His try, the line he picks off Dan Edwards is very good, is very nice. Like Yeah. And he he's looks... very kicking game as well, actually. Yeah. Um, I really liked him and Dan Edwards as a combo. Like I thought they really yeah. gelled together quite nicely. Um, who else? I did have a couple more. Um, Cameron Jones. Oh uh, yeah, the the, the rampage and people carrier bulked up even more. Yeah, because um, he was like a big guy, but he's like I think expanded in all dimensions. He's now he's sort like, of a cube. It's like six and... or six each way. Yeah. But he was like one of those tall props that you get sometimes where like, you know, New Zealand produces a decent number of them, like a tall prop who kind of a lot of his weight is spread out evenly across his body. And he now, as you say, has become like, bam, 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 like across the board, like like a cuboid penguin. 
he looks like a thwomp off Marion. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, really, still has that turn of pace. Yeah, lead the good, turn of pace, good offloading game. Yeah, um, Ethan Lewis for his uh, forty meter dash. Mm. Um, but you can see, sort of, again, you can see the evolution of what the Osprey is wanting to do. Yeah, they're wanting to play off ten a lot more. Um, so you're seeing Scully step up to the line, f- throw in that flat pass, and you know. I, Maybe they can do it because it's an SRC team and maybe not have the, the line speed. Um, but I think it was a really good combination of tests for them. Even yes. They had first up a game where that Aberavon game, they barely had the ball. Um, yeah, really good defensive set. Yeah. Really, so really good. They defended incredibly well. There was one try off first phase, um, which is something I think it was, yeah, Corey Lewis Jenkins on the wing kind of makes. Uh, yeah. It's a, makes, it's a poor read. It's a poor read, but it's the sort of thing he needs to make to learn from, you know? Yeah. And otherwise... Keelan Giles did a very similar one at Leicester away for mm. Matt Scott's try, I think it is, mm. where he just he just reads the wrong person getting the ball. Yeah. And it happens. And it, but yeah. There's, you know, but otherwise the defence was excellent and mm. across the board, you know, and went on for a very long time. And was able to just contain, contain, contain. And if I'm Toby Booth, I'm really happy that we've had one game where they've had very little ball and they've been clinical in the two chances they've got and scored two tries. Yeah. And then the following game, the Bridgen game, they had much more ball and they still managed to shut Bridgen down, Bridgen down very effectively, nil them, but scored their points broadly there. Yeah. And then, you know, the Swansea game where they, it was, you know, probably the biggest test, the, the toughest game they faced. Yeah. And they were able to put it all together much more easily. <laughs> Yeah, shout out Luca Giannini, by the way, for Swansea. <laughs> Played really well, the eight mm. for Swansea. Um, released by the Scarlets, uh, picked up by Swansea. You can, yeah, look out for him. Uh, yeah, great test. So we move on very quickly to extra away this week. Um, there's been no word on whether we'll have our Wales internationals, mm. but they are training. Um, they are back in training. Um so we might see them. Cardiff are playing theirs. Um, that ones that are fit anyway. Same with Dragons. Um, I so imagine I, it's yeah. probably a case by case situation. Derry Lake probably isn't going as he played almost every minute of that tour. But potentially, but... but then you can see the same as Owen Watkin. Yeah, he played also nearly every minute. So you know, we had we had you got to remember we had so few on that tour. That's true. That yeah, we have to like. We have yeah, um. So expect to see more of a squad that you see in a Irk game. Mm. Um, I still expect to see a lot of young guys in there. I expect we'll still take 30, 35 players up. Um, depending on what Exeter want to do, so Exeter obviously not. Um, no Dav Jenkins. You know, this is the custody of Ethan Roots and Joe Hawkins match. Whoever wins this gets to take them home. Um. Yeah, I think it'd be a really good test for us. You know, extra probably. If you asked, say, what Prem team were closest to how we play, is you'd mm, say Exeter. Yeah. Um, except, you know, Toby Booth is likable. Um, so, yeah, be a good test. Uh, I, you know, I like the makeup of the Exeter team. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. There's, you know, not much to say about it, really. It's a pre season game. Yeah. Um, don't get too caught up in pre-seasons. We've had like really good pre-seasons before and awful seasons. Yeah, so to finish off, I know we sort of whistle stopped all through that, but mm-hmm. there's a lot to cover. Rather than playing good player, which we mm. could have played um, tonight, we set each, each other a challenge of naming our favourite 15 from the Ospreys. So mm. this is not the best. This is not the ones that would be the 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 dream team. This is not a street to forget. This is a one to fifteen of our favorite players to pull on the Ospreys jersey. And okay. what I say is that we argue we know we decide on one as the pod overall favorite between the free for each yeah. position. All all three are gonna be uploaded to, to the hellhole to view yeah. to vote on, but we will make a pod one. Okay, so yes, then. Do you want to start at the forwards or do you want to start at the backs? Oh, 
Um, do you want to go 15-1? Do you want to just click it off with Nicky Smith? Just go the ball right, rolling. You're, you're, <laughs> okay. So you're going Nicky Smith at one? Yes. Okay. Or maybe I'm like putting him a fullback. I don't know yet. <laughs> with apologies to Duncan Jones, who's a close second. Nicky Smith. Nicky, it's got to be Nicky really? Smith. Okay. So yeah. I've gone for I've gone for Duncan. It's yeah, kind of, no, it, I love Duncan, but at this point, feels, Nicky's it is feels really hard. We've just excluded Paul James out of existence. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there, 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 there was a lot. So Paul James was in there, definitely. But Paul James, with love and respect, and who was in the crowd on the weekend of the San Dylan, um, mm. Paul James was really good at like he's he's like six out of seven out of ten at everything. Like if you asked him to oh, carry, he'll scrum, carry. Yeah. If you ask him to scrum, he'll scrum. Whereas Duncan had like some of the most underrated hands in in Welsh mm. rugby. Nicky has an amazing footwork game, really great off the ball. So I'm happy to concede Nicky there for the pod. I think, Lucy. yeah, I think Nicky is just like he's got a feeling of being like like mine you know i remember come, seeing him come through or like ours i suppose better than mine i don't own yeah. it um but even though his signature is on my wall so i could legally fake that um but yeah i just yeah i don't know i feel like i felt genuinely really emotional watching him walk off the pitch against cardiff for his last game yeah. and yeah as of someone who's him. there right okay hooker <laughs> yes then go Ooh. favorite hooker to play for the Ospreys. Well, I, he, is it probably like a young son hero? The amount of hat tricks he scored. It's probably just about Sam Parry. Oh, okay. it's Sam very Parry. close. Ro- Robbie, who is yours? I, it's Dewey Lake. Not recently really? biased. Okay. You know, Ooh. Richard Hibbard love him, but yeah, I think Dewey. Yeah, so I went through a thing of like, Mevin Davis was really good. Yeah, because he was in like that fun back end of his career. Hugh Bennett was really underrated. Mm. Um, Hibbard was, I loved Hibbard so much. Yeah. But I, I've also gone for Sam Parry. Baldwin underrated as well. Okay, yeah, Sam Parry. I will happily yeah. concede Sam Parry. So, because he's just, after watching that documentary, there's that photo of him they put up like as a kid wearing an Osprey's jersey. I was just like, yes, that's like the guy you want making 150 appearances for your club. The greatest um, player that is built the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tighted. I think we're all going to be very similar on this. Oh, okay. You go for Adam. R- uh, yes, then. Yeah, Adam Jones for me. Just oh, again, right? This is a hit. I've gone for Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought you might. I thought you might because was... I just, I just love him. Yeah, if you're picking, yes. if you're picking a twenty-three, he's coming on with twenty minutes to go to smash some scrums. Yeah. yeah. I completely agreed. Yeah, Dimitri sits on the bench, but okay, right. who would be your second choice, yeah. James? I, it would be Bomb. Bomb would be my second choice. Yeah. I th- yeah. I, um, Campbell Johnston's on there as well. Okay, because yeah, it's Campbell Johnston because it's just, yeah. like, and, and Dan Suter would be at the bottom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alex <laughs> Jeffries underrated. Yeah, Alex Jeffries is really, Alex Jeffries is a really Tom good Bose, side yeah. step. Tom, but yeah, again, I love Tom, but the Stellenbosch sniper is great. But... <laughs> Reese yeah, Henry bomb. like skating up the list quickly as well. Yeah, Reese Henry. Just like he is in that. Okay. That second, se- second row. Favorite second row. Yes, then you go first. I, I, th- I think there's one obvious one that we should all agree on. Yeah. All right, should we, should we do the obvious one? Yes. The Cox Stein camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Brett, Brett Cobain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan Wynn. No, we all yeah, agree. He's, Alan Wynn. Won. Yeah. Alan Wynn. Yeah. Alan Wynn. Nailed in. Yeah. Okay, Alan wins one. He's at four. Who's who's okay. joining him? It's really interesting because you've got you kind of got like your eras in a way. You've got your yeah, kind of Jonathan Thomas, Ian Evans. Obviously, nowadays you've got British and Irish Test Light and Adam Beard as well. Yeah. Um, so so I think you say James. I think you say James Ryan. Then I was. Gonna <laughs> I'm not for not. I'm. I. I think that was like my first post on Blue Sky. That was. I just put a photo of Adam being in the Lions shirt, and I got no <laughs> likes whatsoever because no one's on there. So, um, <laughs> oh, to pick I'm one, to make an account to like it. I might have to just go for. A, oh, mm. I just do like beard though, don't I? It's just just yeah, like, right. You'll go. You'll go for beard. Okay. Oh, Robbie. someone might shoot me I... for that. 
No, no. I have spent too much time defending Adam Beard to not pick Adam Beard here. <laughs> okay, Adam right. Beard. Adam Beard straight in the team. Just see what we the Lions. I've gone for Tyler Ardron. Oh! I've got him a six. I completely forgot Tyler Ardron. <laughs> oh, Ardron's got him in this Ardron. team somewhere. I, yeah, I, I could not put him in there. I completely forgot Ardron. Oh, man. I might have to change my vote. I might have to apologise to Adam Beard and take him out for someone. Crucially, it's not I, I, James Ryan going in the team, so it's no, fine. Adam, Adam Beard would be on my bench because yeah. I love Big Nasty. I, I think I can, I, give up the, in... I can give up the Beard vote, even though I did shift Ardron to my back row, which is quite smart. Okay. Right, we say Tyler Ardron. Yes. Yeah, we'll take. I'll take Tyler Ardron. Yeah. It's because it's because I watch the highlights of that game against Munster at least once a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where he's just like the size to be like amazing, right? Six. Surely this is my well. Adardron. Some so kind of you had Adardron. You had Adardron. You, had Adron. Robbie, you could put Ian Evans there. Um, uh, Jerry Collins. Yeah, I've gone for Jerry. Jerry is Jerry. like I remember being like ten, being sat in the bottom mm. of the East stand, shouting Jerry. Jerry while he's like fighting someone. Yeah. <laughs> like um, oh, just wonderful, like. And yeah. watching um preseason game against Leeds, I mentioned before, where like he was sat behind me is one of my favorite rugby memories ever. He was wearing a stupid hat that didn't sue him at all, and all the rest of the squad had taken the piss out of him for it. Um yeah. just yeah, a wonderful character, wonderful guy. Love him so much. Yeah. Okay. We're all agreed I on think, Jerry. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement who's at seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, but it's, yeah. Ben, Ben Isaac, no Ben Isaac, Ben Isaacs, <laughs> yeah. Ben Lucas, no Ben Lewis. Oh, God, I took it's me three just, attempts to say a stupid joke name. It, it, um, it's 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 just a Tipperick, isn't it? It's just a Tipperick. Yeah, there was no other option. Like no. he was my first name on okay. the team sheet. Yeah, the greatest Osprey of all time. I will stand by that and fight anyone who says Alan Wynne Jones, who is the the only ever contender. Um. Eight is. I'm still stuck on my eight. Right. Yes. You go first. I, you, you tell me your eight. I've picked um, Dragons defense coach for your tier tier. Okay. Oh. Robbie, you're you're in now at a crossroads as well. No, the, the, is, no. I stand by my answer, but Philo is chose, a very good. You chose Dan. Choice. You chose Dan Baker. Did you? I genuinely like Dan Baker. Twenty thirteen. Um, Dan Baker. <laughs> Morgan Morris. Okay. I, yeah, I thought I, you were going to pick Morgan Morris. I love Morgan Morris. Uh, he is my current favorite player. You know, I obviously, yeah. you know, I've met a number of times. Like, really lovely guy. Friend and of the there pod, is something Morgan about Morris. the fact that, yeah, there is something about the fact that I have spent four years being furious he's not playing for Wales that makes me feel deeply, even more deeply connected to him. You know, that makes me feel like every performance, everything he does right in a rugby field, I care about so much more with the fact he should be playing for Wales and he isn't. And yeah, Morgan Morris is it would be my eight. So so Morgan Morris is on my bench, but I've gone for either mm. Philo because he is my favorite os- he's my favorite Osprey of all time. Mm. Because he just is. And Ryan Jones. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it, we've gone we nearly went for an entire back row without discussing them. Yeah. yeah. Um and I don't know who to pick. I'm I, 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 just for, po- I for popular vote, yeah. I'll go Philo. But yeah. Morgan would be on there. He knows he would be on there. Like, he, well, tier he's tier my current does favorite. Follow me on Twitter, I think. So, um, yeah, and it's one yet. Okay, so let's go into yeah, the scrum no. half. Well, I know who I picked. I'm yeah, not deviating. Yeah. I've got so a reputation to uphold. I didn't yeah, get Tom any Tom Haverfield. Haverfield. Like Robbie for this one. Tom yeah, Haverfield, Tom Haverfield yeah. at nine. Look, I'm and not Captain. doubting that. My favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I think I know who you've gone for. Because you mention them all the time. Still doing it on the fly. Ricky January. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, it's um. He's a shout. He was close to making the twenty. Good shout. Actually. If if I was picking like an era, it would be like the twenty fourteen to twenty sixteen ish Reese Webb when he was at the oh, real yeah. peak of his game. Pre KFC. Pre Lions to a Reese Webb. Mm. So I I've got to count for twenty. That was my oh, bench option. Uh, I, right. For 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 our sake, I am going to say that we are picking Khan Fatwali. Yes. Because 
because of just the democracy, which Robbie is a big believer in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big believer um, in democracy, but a bigger believer in Tom, you, Tom you bloody can't, you, you can't abandon your lefty values now. Um, <laughs> I can abandon anything, but hey, a left winger in Tom Haverfield. Yeah. <laughs> I, I right, I'm gonna put Khan there, but and I don't think um, okay, everyone no. lump, I don't think anyone lumped the blame on Khan Fodorly for box kicking the game away with two minutes to go, like no. the, the treatment have a few got. Okay. No, yeah. Okay. okay no, but I feel, I, I, I will accept I, feel like... I will accept Khan Fodorly at nine, but I'm gonna make one late adjustment to my team. Okay. I feel like ten is gonna be a unanimous one again. It's Marty McKenzie. Um, <laughs> I, I, I genuinely had a thought of him earlier this afternoon. I was thinking, I, I he... think I saw I saw a clip of Damien from last yeah. Saturday's rugby mm. match, wherever that was, and um, <laughs> yeah, just all of a sudden, Marty McKenzie popped in my head. I think, oh, yeah, okay. uh, well, who did everyone say? Did everyone say Dan Edwards? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> bigger. B- Bigger, yeah, damn bigger. Right, I said Sam Davis. I because he I was, like, he, Sam was Davis. he he was like so much better to watch than bigger because mm. I love bigger. Bigger was really effective for us. Like, yeah, it was oh, but it was only in like twenty fifteen onwards that he developed like a running game. Mm. Um, but I'm happy to concede Dan Bigger because it's Dan Bigger, and he's. I might have to stand my ground on you because I've watched so much kicking and started to actually really enjoy tactical kicking. So I think Bigger gets the nod. Okay. Yeah. Right. No. I, yeah. Wait, right. Wingers again. And again, I, like my I, first Ospreys game was Dan Bigger's first Ospreys game, and like I always felt linked to him in that way. Okay. Left winger. Shane. You've gone Shane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's Shane. Closely okay. followed by Eli Walker, second choice. Yes. <laughs> right, so out. he was my top three because my favourite wingers to watch at the Ospreys was Shane, Isaiah Natonga, and Eli Walker. Isaiah Natonga. What a player, Isaiah Natonga. When, when he yeah. scored the hat trick against Cardiff in the pouring rain. And I tell you, it was a monsoon. Um, okay, 12. Who is your favourite Ospreys 12? There's a few contenders in this list, isn't there? Okay, yeah. so you had... I, I've i put my favourite 12 at 13 because I've got two favourite 12s who play for the Ospreys. I'm torn mm. between three. Keith was up there, but I feel like he's still got years to prove why he's my favourite. Um, mm. Andrew Bishop was considered... But again, he's a 13, but he's considered... Didn't make the cut. Owen Watkin... I love him, but not enough to put him as my favourite. Mm. I settled on Josh Matavesi. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Be- because like every time I see him play, I have a smile on my face. Yeah. I I just like I love Scrum Cap era Josh Matavesi. I love like like he did everything that you hated James Hook for, but because it's Josh Matavesi, it just I smile. Yeah, yeah. I opened I opened Facebook up for the first time in a very long time the other day and I saw the first clip was Josh Matavesi dummying through a Leicester team when playing for Bath. Yeah. Just grinning through a dummy. I thought he's so, very, very so, good. So who have you put at twelve, Robbie? So I've gone back and forth a bit here. Um I Keith. Uh, right up there, and I'm really torn between Keith and Gavin Henson. Um, and I've considered putting the two together as a midfield, but I don't think that works at all. I don't think a Keith Gav axis is in any way balanced or logical. Um, but yeah, um, I love them for very different reasons, but I'm I'm gonna say Gav, um. Okay. For the sake of argument, as you say, Keith's got a long way to go. And yeah, I love watching him play. He's the greatest player in the world. But yeah, Gav um, was just something else. You know, as I will stand by the most talented player where I was producing the Gareth Edwards. And, you know, it's a shame it didn't come to be, but like in an Osprey shirt, he was always on it. And, you know, won us our first ever league title. Um, 
was yeah, in what I, what I remember because we won it at Border Reavers, mm. like the actual title, which was Gregor Townsend's last ever game. Oh. Which I found out in Alvin Jones's book. But Yeston, who have you chosen at 12? Uh, my team is so like just really interesting selections, and I've missed like half, I've missed like a really good 15 to go about there. It's like You've got the JJ Angle Braxton. It's like it's like a second string Osprey's favorite fifteen. So I've gone for Ashley Beck. Yeah, I love Ashley Beck. So he's at my thirteen. I uh, spoiler. He's at my thirteen. So who do you want to pick? We've got Matavesi, Gav, or Beck. I can give up my Beck claim. So if you want to, I don't mind the... putting Gav in. Yeah, okay. I think that's the the sensible choice. Because. Yeah. The thing is, I do get the heart pull towards Madavesi though. Like Gav is more of a head pick than Madavesi being a heart pick. I get it. There's there's that Top Gear meme where you know the Jeremy Clarkson goes like, "This is brilliant, but I yes. like this." Like Gavin yeah. Henson is brilliant, but I like my Josh Madavesi. Yeah. Okay, thirteen. Who have you gone for, Robbie? Um. Yeah, sort of Keith. Um, but sort of Tommy Bow sliding him into 13, where he did play you some very good rugby with the Ospreys. Okay. Yeah, okay. in order to get him in the team. Um, but if Keith sits in there, then Tommy bumps out to the wing. But Tommy Bow is again one of my favourite, you know, players of all time, favourite Ospreys of all so time. I, and favorite I've got running TV presenters of all time. I've got him, I've got him on my wing. So Yeah. Yeah, I'd bow on the wing as well. Okay. So are we I've, happy see, to I've put... had to move him into 13 to, okay. to to accommodate the other choice I've had to make there. Okay, right. Okay, let's put Tommy Bow in at thirteen because I feel like. Whoa! Robbie's... Okay, that came out of nowhere. Um, let's let's. Uh, I feel okay. like Ro- so who are your thirteens? You haven't even said your two thirteens. Oh, mine, mine was Beck. Because I mine, of course. Bish. Bish. Oh, Bish. See, Bish is a good shout. Never miss a tackle, man. Right. I think we've got to do the wing before we decide if Tommy Bow is going a wing or thirteen. Okay, right. Who's the right? My my wing was Bow. Mm. My wing was Bow, closely followed by Hannah Dirksen. Yeah, I, Hanno and Keelan, I think, deserve mentions. You see, right? I love but... Keelan, right? I love Keelan with all my heart. But no one for like cult hero status, Bo and Dukes, mm. and I like Miles Head. The other one is Jeff Hassler. That was my. Oh, yes. My... Super Jeff, um, yeah. But I, I feel like we have to put Hassler in on principle because it's our like a longest running joke. They've got it off to Hassler. It off to, they got it off to Hassler. So I feel like out and of, also like, him and Ardron have got to be best. The best friends have got to be together. Yeah, I mean, I'm still the, so angry but, that interview has been taken off YouTube. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the um, look, the moment Tom Haberfield just bumped out of bumped out the scrum half shirt, I did move him straight to the wing, and he's <laughs> going on the wing now for me. Okay, right. So we need to make an executive decision. Thirteen. Who do you want to? I'm happy. Concede and put Bo at 13. Tommy Bo at to 13 put... with Jeff Hassel on the wing. Just for pure rugby chaos. I love yes. that. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I feel like I know Robbie's 15 choice. I think, I think I'm going to be swimming against the tide here, but yeah. Okay. Is it Richard Fussell? It's Richard Fussell. It's Richard Goddamn Fussell, the greatest counter attacking fullback in Europe to this and day. I know, if I was made I... Wales coach now, I would cap him. I know Yestin's as well because he loves this man. It's Dan oh. Evans. Lee Byrne. Oh, oh, really? Oh. Yeah. So we've all gone for three different. I've gone for Dan Evans. Byrne was kind might. of like my favourite full, but well, probably one of my favourite players growing up. Mm. Like he was like one of the first people I saw like do something. I was like, oh, yeah, I like that guy. He can. <laughs> he, he, yeah. he can play us. Okay, this is a this is the toughest one. For me. This is probably the yeah. yeah. I, I'd agree with any of the three is going in the team. There's you need like a free headed coin to flip. The other guy I thought about was Sam Davis as a fullback because I loved him as yeah, a fullback. Yeah, he was an underrated fullback. Yeah, that weird period with Dan Evans on the wing. And the, <laughs> yeah, the Sam weird Davis Dan Evans on the wing era. Um. <sighs> I feel like Dan Evans is too easy a choice because he scored so many tries. But also, but he is kind of, if you're picking an all-time Ospreys team, objectively, like, he, you're, yeah. if, he, if you're picking it on how good they were at the top of their game, it's Lee Byrne. Dan Evans. If you're picking oh, him as a servant for the club, it's Dan Evans. Yeah. 
And if you're picking it correctly, it's Richard Fussell. <laughs> if you're picking it tomorrow to play against Exeter, it's Richard Fussell. <laughs> it's Richard Fussell. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm happy to go see it for Fussell, just because, uh, yeah. I was yeah, expecting it to be Dan the, Evans. The, I was expecting... the, viewers can, the viewers can have the selection headache of picking between okay. Dan Evans and Lee Byrne. That's, That's not my problem. <laughs> yeah. so, so the Ospreys Irie favourite 50 is Mickey, Sam Parry, Bomb. Alan Wynne Jones and Tyler Argeron, Jerry Collins, Justin Tipperick, Philo Tia, Oof, um, Khan Fatwali and Dan Bigger, Shane Williams and Jeff Hassler on the wings, Gavin Henson, Tommy Bow in the centre, Oof, Richard Fussell on at fullback, Richard Fussell slash Dan Evans. They can play halves. They can play a half each, and Lee Byrne as well. Though they can play twenty minutes each. We've left the viewers with a really good selection here, Dick. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so some people we didn't uh, like uh, mention um, Dan Lydiot, um as a favourite. Sam Lewis would be Sam Lewis. Yeah, Colt Hero. Try to think off the top of my head. Um, Brendan Leonard is no one's favourite. Um, James King. James King. James King. King. Solid James player. Hook. James yeah. Hook. Um, Barry Davis just came Barry to my mind. Davis, yeah. Um, look, I don't think Nicky Ali Davis Walker. is anyone's absolute favorite, but the face charge down gets him so many points. Yeah. Nicky Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you got like Brent Cobain, Andy Lloyd, Sonny Parker. Yeah. Steve, Steve mm, Tandy. Sonny Parker. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, there's there's a lot there. Like, but you could even say like 2013 Dan Baker. Yeah. Um, sure. Sure. Who else? Joe Beeman, if you want to really extend. Oh, your Joe career. Beeman, yes. yeah. In... You got Elvis Ciali back in the day. Ryan Bevington briefly. Scott Otten. Scott Otten, we didn't Oh, mention. yeah. Evan. Oh, my God. Evan. I'm changing the hooker. It's Evan Phillips. Evan Phillips. <laughs> Is he on He's the bench? Safe. He's now on the bench. Yeah. I think Ethan's yeah. university number 16. Um, Ethan Phillips. Should we do a bench quickly then? Ethan, sure. Are we I'm, sa- I'm are... loving doing this. This is great. Are we, are we saying Duncan on the bench? for 17? Duncan on the bench. Duncan and Dimitri and... on the bench. Dimitri. Oh, Dimitri. Look at that. A bomb squad. Step aside. That is hell of a bomb <laughs> squad. Uh, Beard. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are we doing 6-2 or 5-3? Let's go this traditional 5-3. Okay. Flanker. Oh, no, Ryan, Ryan. It's got to be Ryan. Jones. Oh, Ryan. Yeah, covers across the back row. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-one. Right there's Tom Haberfield. Oh, they're Morgan Morris. <sighs> love, we could I go love six two. I love. No. Yeah. <laughs> we could go six two, go... and that would mean we need to scrum Andy, off is very versatile. Andy and wore twenty-one positions. way mid that epic performance against Worcester in the Challenge Cup. We won like three yes. to ten minutes. You are right there. Uh, okay, and then Tom Haberfield, 22. Yes. Can cover more than uh, one position. We won. Yeah. Dan Evans, it's, you 23. Need, you, you know, that's fair. That's that's fair. Um, head coach. There's got to be one head coach, surely. It's Toby Booth. Scott Johnson. Uh, Toby Booth. Yeah. I um, I think Steve Tandy's reputation has... I think we're getting towards it being like replenished because I think he did a lot of really good stuff. He'd probably be second choice for me, but I think it um, is Boofy. His, his assistant is Brad Davis. Okay, personal yeah. favourite of mine. Um, alongside... Duncan, I feel like Lynn, again. Lynn, yeah, Duncan. Lynn Jones has to be in there. Sure, yeah. Um... So we're saying Duncan, Lynn. We need one more assistant coach. Um, one more. I can think of plenty of names it isn't. Um, yeah, it's not Brock James. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's another one I could say that I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. Um, Is it Renzo Orn Molly? Maybe, um, <laughs> I don't, yeah, 
you know, we've got a team there. You know, we can have okay. Mike Ruddock developing the youth for whatever. Yeah, there you are, Mike Ruddock. I'm Mike Ruddock. In. Okay, so this is entering the unofficial ERG. Mm. Um, actually, no, this is the team we're sending to the Anglo Welsh League. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Mickey, Sam Parry, Bomb. Alwyn Jones, Tyler Argeron, Jerry Collins, Justin Timbrick, Philo Tietia, Khan Fatwelli, Dan Bigger, Shane Williams, Gavin Henson, Tommy Bow, Jeff Hassler, Richard Fussell, Ivan Phillips, Duncan Jones, Dimitri Ahip, Adam Beard, Ryan Jones, Morgan Morris, Tom Haberfield, Dan Evans, coached by Toby Booth, Brad Davis, Duncan, Lynn Jones, and Mike Ruddock. What a team. Solid we also enough. didn't mention Stephen Myler once. Oh my God, we didn't. I feel a fraud. Yeah. How did we all forget Stephen Myler? Oh, Max Nagy's best friend. <laughs> oh. Right. I think right, we have what to we've got to do. There. Yeah, we've got to do another 15 another week and work Stephen Myler in yeah. there. We're going to do a team I would have loved to have played around Stephen Myler at one point. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to see him and Gavin Henson in a room. <laughs> Imagine that combo. Um, okay, right. We have got through a lot. To, it's going to be a hmm. really long pod, but it's the first one back. There's a lot to cover. Uh, I think it's gone well. I think I'm really yeah. excited for the season ahead. Um, lots to come from us, hopefully. Uh, Robbie, congratulations on the uh, South African New Zealand video. Oh, it's thank you. Really well. Yeah. Um, Looking forward to the lineup video coming out with George Cruz. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's ready. That's coming on Sunday. Beautiful. Yestin, um, well done. You are now in your third year of uni, nearly. Yes. Yeah, because I haven't written anything for a month, so there's nothing for me to read. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but you are going into your third year of your sports journalism uh, degree. Um, potentially final year of education. Potentially. Mm. Some say you never stop learning. Um, that's true, but they're all, yeah, they're, all idiots. they're all they're all idiots. Um, but there is some pieces coming soon, so to keep keep your eyes. Uh, I, I yeah. so yeah, so you can find Robbie at Squid Rugby everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find Yestin, Yestin underscore Thomas twenty one. Haven't done this in a while, and you can also find me at Osprey's Irie. Um, follow the pod. We, I can say this now. Yeah, we we're going to get some player interviews. So hmm. very similar to the Toby Booth stuff where it'd be a bit shorter. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to have some player interviews. I am working on something for the Ospreys Bulls game in October, hmm. uh, which will be very interesting. Um, other than that, enjoy, folks. For those travelling to Exeter, have a safe journey. Uh, for those then, we will see you ready for the season opener against the DHL Stormers at home and just before that the double header of Wales Women versus Australia and the Dragons Dragons. the Ospreys yeah I forgot who they were then Um, yeah have a good one everyone Jonathan Sprout was robbed